let me acknowledge uh, uh, City Council Member Carlos Cisneros of District H. Thank you for joining us. Uh, let me acknowledge State Senator Boris Miles. Oh, there he is behind me. Uh, County Commissioner Rodney Ellis. Uh, there he is. <laughs> County Attorney Chris Menifee. Uh, Environmental Attorney Jim Blackburn. Um, of course, we know City Attorney Atura Michelle and, and his team uh, that's also present. Uh, Dr. Laura Hopkins with the City of Houston Health Department. Um, I do also want to acknowledge uh, School Board Trustee Kathy Bluford Daniel, who's quite familiar with the area that we are talking about today. Uh, and then there will be others that will probably be introduced as we move forward. Look, let me thank you for, for uh, joining us today. Uh, I also want to acknowledge others in the room, including residents of Fifth Ward, Cashmere Garden, Gardens, and others who may be affiliated with the Houston Health Department. Today we are announcing that the city of Houston has delivered to Union Specific Railroad the city's notice of intent to sue uh, Union Specific under the Federal Resource Conservation and Recovery Act. The lawsuit is being filed for the imminent and substantial endangerment from environmental contamination from UP's facilities on Liberty Road in the Greater Fifth Ward and Cashmere Gardens neighborhood. The city is joined in this effort by Harris County, as well as an organization of private citizens called the Bayou City Initiative, led by none other than Jim Blackburn. Today, we are continuing our fight for environmental justice by notifying UP that we fully intend to invoke the federal judicial process. However, before we can file a lawsuit, we are required by law to deliver this notice to UP of our intent to sue, and we must do so 90 days beforehand. We have served copies of the letter on the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality and the Federal Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, who will have the opportunity to use their resources to require UP to take action. Historical operations at the UP facility include creosote treatment and waste disposal. The result in contamination reached the groundwater, the Greater Fifth Ward and Cashmere Garden neighborhood. The UT, UP facility and surrounding properties continue to be contaminated today with numerous hazard materials, and these waste materials continue to move underground, migrating further off-site from the facility. Earlier this month, we announced the discovery of the chemical dioxin in a single surface soil sample taken on June 15, 2022, near Liberty Road and Lavender Street in Cashmere Gardens. Following the detection in the initial sample, the Health Department gathered more samples and is conducting laboratory testing of those samples. The Health Department is also proceeding with a community plan to inform residents and will continue working closely with the EPA, the Texas Department of State Health Services, and the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality TCEQ. The finding of dioxin in the Fifth Ward and Cashmere Gardens area is noteworthy and underscores while we are working aggressively to protect families and their children. We already know that the Texas Department of State Health Services found a higher than expected cancer rate of acute lymph lymphoplastic leukemia and nearly five times the expected rate in the community. We cannot continue to wait and hope that the right thing is going to be done to protect the people of Fifth Ward and Cashmere Gardens. While we invite renewed dialogue with UP to address the needs of the city of Houston, as well as our allies in this action, and UP's neighbors, the Houstonians living in close proximity to UP Liberty Road facility, we want UP to hear us very clearly. If UP, will not make truly meaningful changes to address the pollution with our lawsuits 
by the city, the county, and the community, then we will seek justice at the courthouse. UP must do more to investigate, remove, and contain these contaminants. UP must engage in thorough testing of the soil and air. UP must remediate the underground contamination. UP must assist the residents of Cashmere Gardens and the Greater Fifth Ward with access to health care and diagnostic screening. And residents must be relocated out of harm's way. UP should assist with funding for relocation, whether that be temporary or permanent. A full list of our demands to UP can be found in our notice of intent letter. The letter to UP is the latest step in the city's ongoing efforts to bring redress to the historically African-American communities of the Greater Fifth Ward and Cashmere Gardens. Far too long and at too high a cost, these communities have been ignored and disrespected by UP. The cost is simply too high. The burden on these residents is simply too great. Now let me yield to the Harris County Attorney, Chris Menifee, who will be followed by um, Jim Blackburn, who will then be followed by Commissioner Ellis. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor. And I'm Christian Menifee, I'm the Harris County Attorney, uh, the Civil Legal Officer for Harris County, and we act as the Chief Enforcement Officer for all environmental issues at the county we have for more than 60 years. Look, folks, we're here today because uh, enough is enough. Union Pacific has known about this contamination in this area since the mid-1990s. They started proposing a cleanup plan way back in 2014. And since then, there have been cancer clusters that have been designated in this area. Uh, the EPA has gotten involved and said that the data upon which Union Pacific is relying has gaps in it. Uh, and we've seen people die time and time again in these communities. So we're here today taking action because enough is enough. Despite all these things, and to be clear, the city, my office, we have tried to have discussions with Union Pacific to reach a resolution. We have tried time and time again. And yet despite all these things, right now we are absolutely nowhere. Just last year, a 13-year-old boy out in these neighborhoods, out in Fifth Ward, passed away from leukemia. Um, I say this as someone who had a brother who was battling leukemia as a child, someone who has family members who grew up in Fifth Ward. And each and every one of us in this room knows that if these issues were happening in River Oaks, if these issues were happening in Westview, you would see every single public official who's worth a damn. You would see them all out there making sure that something got done. The, the company that was at fault would be out in these communities taking care of the issues. We cannot ignore Fifth Ward, and so that's why we're here to get today. And to be clear, we're asking for three very simple things from Union Pacific. We want them to fully investigate the spread of the contamination in this area, both on-site and off-site. We want them to fully assess the health risks that are associated with that contamination and inform the folks in these communities about the health risks to them. And of course, we want them to do everything in their power to ensure that the people who live in these communities are safe, whether that be relocation or a cleanup plan that doesn't have massive gaps in it as was already said by the EPA. We're filing uh, under a federal law. Uh, we call it RICRA, and you're going to hear Attorney Jim Blackburn talk a little bit more about it. But the reason why we're doing this is because this gets us into the federal courts. And at this point, we have tried the other avenues. Our, our options are limited in state court and under state law. We've tried having the conversations. But one important thing about this law is it gives the courts very broad authority to fashion a remedy that's going to actually help these people who live in these communities. And what you're seeing today is folks in the community, the city and the county coming together to fight side by side to protect these residents. And, and most importantly, what we're hoping that this is going to do is deepen the partnership with the Environmental Protection Agency. The city of Houston, led by the mayor, uh, sent a letter to the EPA last year, and the EPA went through and reviewed the permit application for the cleanup plan that Union Pacific had submitted. And what they said was, hey, there are gaps in the data that you're relying on. That was a result of the letter that was sent by the city. So we're hoping that the EPA will be more in the game on this and standing alongside us advocating uh, for these communities. Folks, in closing, we, we cannot ignore Fifth Ward. 
okay, this is a community that has higher rates of cancer, higher rates of asthma, higher rates of COPD than other areas in our county. And our county is already at the center of the environmental justice movement, just given that we're here in the energy capital of the world. So these are folks who cannot be ignored. Many of us on this stage have walked these streets and had folks like Sandra Edwards tell us, in this house, you had a grandparent who had cancer. In this house, two kids died from cancer. In this house, a married couple and the husband got cancer. We cannot continue to ignore the issues that these folks are facing, and we're going to continue to fight on this. We welcome continued conversation with Union Pacific, but thus far, it is not getting us to a point to where we've actually seen meaningful change. And so because of that, we're pursuing this legal, this legal avenue, uh, and we're going to fight it out in the courts if necessary. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the Bayou City Initiative was formed initially to focus on flooding, and we worked with the Northeast Super Neighborhood, uh, the Cooper Neighborhoods United, and in the course of our flooding investigation, we ran across contamination at the Union Pacific site. And I took this issue to my class at Rice University, and uh, the students wanted to study it. And so with the help of Lauren Hopkins over here, who is an absolute resource of the city of Houston, we were able to pull together some of the most damning information I have ever run across in terms of environmental contamination. I've been practicing environmental law for 50 years, and this is one of the, uh, really one of the more extreme and important contamination situations I've ever seen. Uh, we have cancer clusters, like Christian was saying, and we have come together, the city, the county, and the citizens group. Um, uh, I think Joetta Stevenson is here from Fifth Ward. I think Sandra Edwards is here. I don't know where Sandra, Sandra over there. Uh, they came and worked with our class. They have opened uh, their, their minds and their hearts to us to, to really expose a situation that is, just, just shouldn't continue to exist. Today, we have all filed notices of intent to sue, which are jurisdictional in federal court. Uh, this is the first step. We have to wait 90 days before a lawsuit can file. We can, we can wait longer than 90 days, but we really can't file before 90 days. And the hope is that Union Pacific will reach out and that we'll have a chance to come up with something that maybe can be negotiated. That would be the easiest solution that we could find. Uh, hopefully that will happen. If it doesn't, then the federal courts are there. And in my career in environmental law, I'm, as I got older and older, I relied less and less on the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality and more on the federal courts. Going to the federal courts is a real honest right that we have as citizens. It is, I think, the first time the city, the county, and a citizens group have kind of united to basically put together an action on behalf of a community. I am so proud, Mayor, that you guys have done this. Rodney, Christian, I can't tell you how important it is to have you with the citizens group. Uh, and hopefully we'll get EPA and hopefully we'll have a, a community that can stand proud with the cleanup and the fact that we have moved past this. But we've got a lot of work to do. I do want to tell you that we are very humbled to be here and thankful and really appreciative. Before, before, I run before you go. Before the commissioner comes, let me bring up uh, City Attorney Terry Michelle. Quite frankly, he has been the one who has taken the point uh, for the city of Houston. He's the one who's been, who wrote the letter to uh, uh, the EPA uh, that uh, got many of those documents that uh, Christian Menifee referred to. Uh, he's the one who's organized and worked specifically with the health department. Uh, so you've heard from me at the, at the beginning, but quite frankly, the person that's out front uh, as the lawyer uh, is uh, Tura Michelle, the city attorney, along with his fantastic team. So, Tura Michelle. Thank you, Mayor. R RICRA, the Resource Conservation and Recovery Act, provides for prospective equitable relief. So it's looking to help the community in the future. But to do that, it has to alleviate the sins of the past. All I want to emphasize right now, because I believe the mayor and Mr. Blackburn and Mr. Menifee before me have pretty well outlined what is being sought and the process. What I want to emphasize is that these entities are here as citizens. This statute provides for citizen lawsuits. Citizens includes municipalities, counties, and other entities. A citizen's lawsuit exists so the citizens can step into the shoes of the federal government. But the federal government can come in and take over this litigation. 
we will still provide support, everything that's needed, but the federal government can bring to bear its full resources, uh, its regulatory resources, and importantly, funding resources for the remediation and for relocation. So we are asking that the federal government step into this lawsuit, and we will, we have asked that before, and we will reiterate it again. And just like Jim uh, Blackburn and community uh, advocates, the county has just been an invaluable partner with us every step of the way. Let me bring up uh, County Commissioner Rodney Ellis of Precinct 1. Thank you, Mayor. I'm, I'm putting my mask on as well. All these lawyers on the stage, I'm going to cover up. Uh, but, Mayor, thank you. Uh, Jim Blackburn made the comment this might be the first time that the county and the city have coalesced on action like this. It won't be the last. Uh, I think under this mayor and our county judge and Commissioner Garcia, our great county attorney, you see more and more of this. It is important, Senator Miles, that uh, we all come together because it makes a very powerful statement. I want to say that for longer than I've been alive, people in the Fifth Ward have been living in the shadow of Union Pacific. And those nearby neighborhoods in Fifth Ward were, as the mayor said, historically black, increasingly becoming more and more Hispanic. Folks in Fifth Ward and Cashmere Gardens who lived near the site have known for years that something was not right. They buried too many children, too many loved ones, and more are sick right now. The research confirms what many in that neighborhood have known for years. Union Pacific is poisoning that community. But there's only one stat which the mayor brought up earlier that everybody ought to remember. The childhood leukemia rate in that community stands at five times the state average. More than anything else, Mayor, that makes the point that something is wrong. That should keep everybody up at night, especially the folks at Union Pacific. Senator Miles and the other council members and I are here to support the work of Arturo, of our great county attorney, Jim Blackburn, you organizing the community people. Mayor, thank you for having it here. But look, we shouldn't have to spend all of those city and county resources in a courtroom. Our message to Union Pacific is you ought to negotiate a settlement, and we want to let you know we're going to bring as much firepower as we can so that you stay up at night until you do settle it. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. And we shouldn't have to expand, but we are prepared to expand whatever it takes to take this fight on behalf of the people who live uh, in uh, in that Kashmir Fifth Ward area. Let me also continue to acknowledge uh, some of the elected officials who are here that I may not have called earlier. Uh, Council Member Letitia Plummer at large is present. Uh, Council Member who represents, well, there are two that represent this particular area. Uh, Council Member Tasha Jackson, District B. I've already uh, um, acknowledged Council Member Carlos Cisneros of District H, which kind of borderlines, and then Council Member David Robinson, who represents at large. Uh, Director Williams is also present, and Director, you need to come a little bit closer. Um, now let me bring on someone who's been engaged in, in advocating for the people in this area for quite some time, going back to even 2017, if not, if not before, and that is the state senator for this area, State Senator Boris Miles. Thank you, Mayor. I'm State Senator Boris Miles of Senate 13. Senate 13 is where Union Pacific site is located. I began fighting against Union Pacific Creosote site in 2017 after being elected to the State Senate, which was brought to me by my, one of my employees whose family has been directly affected, Kathy for Daniels, who we spoke of earlier. Um, I'm encouraged to see the city Thank you, Mayor, and the county, Mr. Menifee, and Senator, Judge, uh, Commissioner Ellis, um, coming together to address this decade-old problem. The city's finding of dioxin is persistent cancer-causing chemical in Fifth Ward and in Cashmere Gardens on top of the Texas Department of State Health Services finding and confirming cancer clusters surrounding the UPS creosote site is simply alarming. This discovery further proves that the current Union Pacific plan does not go far enough to clean up the cancer causing chemical, to have uh, uh, permitted the grounds and the water negatively impacting these 
poor communities of color for decades. TCEQ needs to reject the Union Pacific plan and make the company go back to the drawing board and create a plan that actually removes the dangerous chemicals from the site and surrounding neighborhoods. The Fifth Ward and Cashmere Garden communities have been waiting far too long and have lost too many family and friends for us not to act. This is a pure, pure definition of environmental racism. And I'm happy to be part of this team to address this ongoing problem for decades. Thank you, Mayor. Let me thank all of the speakers, and of course there are other people here who can serve as a resource. If you have any questions uh, to any Sir, this 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 is in. This is in reference. This this is with all due respect. This is in reference. Mr. Nell Stevens, I'm Miss Sandy. If you wish to come and speak, please come. If you wish to come, you can come. Janetta, you wish, you want, Ms. Stevens, you want to come? Sorry about this. I didn't. I tried to stay strong to come up here. I didn't want to. I didn't even want to speak. But this fight has affected me, my family, the community, everybody I have. Lo I love. Most of them have died. I watched a kid last year, all the way until his death. We had a celebration for him. That took a big bite out of my life to see this baby die from something and nobody has done nothing until now. So forgive these tears are kind of for joy and hurt. I'm glad that y'all finally stepped up and somebody is finally seeing what I've been fighting for for so long that I feel should have been done sooner, but it's never too late. And I'm appreciating this, all of this, because I have seen a lot during this fight since I've been a part of Impact. And to see somebody and see how y'all come together, this is awesome. I, this is a blessing that I have been praying for for years. And if I know God answer our prayers. I do believe this fully and solely. I know he do. And this here has proved that he is listening and he is answering our prayers because there's so many of us out there are still sick. Now, I, I don't know if I had permission to say this, but now Mr.'s mom is suffering from cancer. That's two people. She lost her son, buried him last year, and now this year she's fighting for her life. And this is just an ongoing pattern that keeps happening, and I'm not happy at all, and I'm still in fifth ward. And then they have nerves to be fighting me for taxes. I have my property not worth five cents, but you want me to pay taxes? That's why I'm still in the house with Mo because they will not come redo my house because I'm behind on tax. You worry about the wrong damn thing for me. You need to be worried about life. We are worried about saving people and people continue to live healthy, air, water, and your property. You shouldn't walk outside and be exposed to cancer or all other kind of elements. But that's what Fifth Ward has. That's what we are up against. So I need among what are y'all doing, but I still need y'all help to stop them from chasing us down for taxes on our property that's not worth five cents. Can we please look into that, too? That's all I want to say. Thank y'all so much for what y'all doing. I love all y'all. Thank you. Because we couldn't have did it by ourselves if y'all hadn't have did it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be brief. First of all, I want to let you know that I am so grateful for the city of Houston, for the county, 
and for my elected officials, my representatives that have stepped up to the mantle after all these years, because it's not about me, it's not about Sandra, it's about an entire community. It's about the thousands of people who were born in Fifth Ward, like myself, born with bronchitis. It's, it's about people who I've lost. And I lost a good friend when I was a little girl. He died of leukemia. I had no idea about the connection even then. We're blindsided. We live in a community we love, but we're being poisoned every day. And we begged, we pleaded, and we fought. And I'm gonna hand it to Sandra Edwards had been that warrior. She's been that tip of the spear. But I wanna thank, thank the people standing here. I do, I really truly wanna thank you. And I wanna thank the, the scientists that have provided that proof. I wanna thank Jim. I, these are experts that have come to our, to our aid. They have supported us and they have provided us what I call the, the ammunition that we need to go against a powerful and long uh, company. The railroad is probably the oldest business we have in the United States, so it is powerful. And they have continued to deny, deny, and deny, and we will continue to fight and to fight and to fight. And just like the mayor said, we hope the feds get on board because Administrator Regan was in traveling through Fifth Ward a few months ago, and he recognized that we were not over here playing. He recognized that that was truly a problem. So I, I second that. Please let the feds get on board this, this train because it's a powerful locomotive. And once again, I want to thank these very people that are standing here in support of the historic Fifth Ward and Cashmere Gardens. Thank you. Let me thank them both, and certainly was no intent to oversight them, okay? Overlook them.